Someone asked me on the channel if Google Keep is better than Evernote. <laughs> Maybe. Let's have a look today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. More what? Well, you could spend time teaching your dog agility skills. <laughs> I get asked the question a lot about Google Keep, and to be honest, I have been sort of resisting doing a Google Keep demo. The reason is pretty simple. For me to really showcase any product properly, I have to embrace it. I have to use it in to really understand how well it works. And I am pretty deep in the Evernote end of the pool. I've been using Evernote for such a long time and it's such an integral part of how I do things. I was concerned that using Google Keep would somehow dilute what I do with Evernote, or maybe I was just worried that Evernote might get a little bit jealous. Well, it turns out that Evernote may have reason to question my fidelity. Google Keep is surprisingly elegant and useful. It is a well-implemented application. It's simple and easy to use. Evernote, frankly, is high maintenance. It's a very, very capable application, but that in that capability, it can get a little bit complex if you're just looking at doing simple things. So there are gonna be a lot of instances where Google Keep is a better choice. We're gonna see today if we can dive in and help you understand where Google Keep may fit in your world, regardless of whether or not you use Evernote. Now, for those of you that do want the comparison with Evernote, at the very end of this video today, we will do a kind of a side-by-side -side comparison and talk about the differences between the features. But now, I wanna dive in and take a look at what Google Keep brings to the table. Now, both Google Keep and Evernote are note-taking applications. They allow us to create simple little notebooks uh, and collect a whole bunch of information into those notebooks. Now, one of the strengths of a product like this is it's a cloud-based service, meaning that when we create a note on our computer, on our desktop or our notebook computer, we can see and access that note later on our mobile device and vice versa. It gives us kind of a ubiquitous access to whatever content it is we create, which makes it tremendously useful. It becomes kind of our digital brain, storing all sorts of little loose bits of information in one place so that we can access them when we need them, when we need that information or where we need that information if we happen to be in mobile. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Google Keep is one of the free tools that's available as part of the, as part of the Google uh, family of tools. You access Google Keep having signed in to your Google account, the same account that you sign into Gmail or Google Calendar with. And if you're in any of those applications, you can go into the tools area or in, into the applications and you can choose Google Keep. Or you can just type into your browser keep.google.com and it will bring you to your blank notebook. Now, Google Keep is a cloud-based service, meaning any notes that I create here on my desktop computer are gonna be synced to the cloud, and I'll be able to access those same notes on different computers, on my smartphone or my tablet. So I, in any changes I make on those devices is gonna be reflected here. That's one of the beauties of a cloud-based service like Google Keep is it's always up to date with our most current information, which makes it an incredibly useful kind of digital brain, storing all those little loose bits of information for us and giving us access to them when we need them. Now, Google Keep is a very simple uh, note-taking or notebook application. We can't say divide our notebooks into different and in, in, under different topics. They're, the only way that we can we create a difference between our notes is by color coding them, or we can also attach labels to them that allows us to sort them, but we can't create multiple notebooks the way we could say in Evernote. Uh, but that's not too big a deal. I increasingly, even in a tool like Evernote, I don't create multiple notebooks, but instead, I create labels or tags and I sort my notes uh, based on search rather than a visual search of having them in a notebook. So I don't think that's a big limitation. Let's show you how you go about creating a new note. And to create a new note, you just go into the dialog box, click, and then you can create a new note title. We're gonna create a new note right here and take a look at what our options are available here within this new note. You can add all of the text of the note, all of the main content you can type in here and you can put in lots of, of interesting stuff. And you can go on and on. If we take a look down here in the bottom, this will give us an idea of a lot of the things that we can do with our notes within Google Keep. We can set our notes as a reminder, which is a really useful feature, creating simple little notes as reminders. It's a nice, quick, and easy way to create reminders. 
you can collaborate on your notes to a certain extent with others. So you can actually share your note with somebody else. Now this would be really useful for say sharing a shopping list or a to-do list with a spouse. So you can create lists and notes that you can share. You can color code your notes that makes it easier for you to see uh, when you look at Google Keep exactly what topics and what, what the different kind of families of notes are. You can add images. You can archive them, which is storing them and saving them so that they're saved for later or for research, but they aren't necessarily here seen in your main browser window. And then more. Oh, what more can we do? Delete notes, add labels, which I'll show you in a minute, add a drawing, make copies of notes, and show checkboxes. This is something that I really like. If you just click on this show checkboxes, it turns your note into a list, a checklist, and you can add new list items. So when I was saying that you can use your notes, say as a shopping or to-do list that you may, might want to share with somebody else, this is a great way of doing that, of setting that up, is just turning the note here into a checkbox. So you can also hide checkboxes, which puts it back to a regular note. And you can also copy the note into Google Docs where you want to store it for long term, or maybe you want to convert it and turn it into a word processing document where you start to work with it more and more. So that is the basic structure of the notes. Nothing too fancy as far as the note structure, as you'll see. Uh, very limited as far as formatting and layout and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, really simple. Here's how I think we're going to end up using Google Keep a lot. Let's go to our website. Let's go to Dotto Tech. And let's say you're at Dotto Tech and you're watching my latest video on, what's my latest video on? On the new Gmail interface. There it is. Let's say that you're at this page here and you're watching this video on the new Gmail interface. You say, that's a great video that Steve's posted. I'm really interested in this. I want to save this for later or I want to use it somewhere else. Here's what happens. Uh, I installed in my browser the Google Keep extension. You see right here, there's a little light bulb. This allows me to just with one click of the mouse, save this to keep. And all it does is it creates a quick little note with the URL. This is where it is ever so valuable. I can say this is important. I could actually add a label to it if I want. Say I want to save this as a something that is relating to YouTube because I save a lot of stuff from YouTube uh, and then I, I save it. And so now what's happened is we've created that note. If we go back to Google Keep, we will see that this URL with the, with the video that I was just talking about, it has been saved and it's got the tag YouTube and it says this is important. So now I've got this note available to me uh, and stored within Google Keep keep. So that's in my mind, probably one of the ways that you will use it most often is through this simple web clipper interface. Now, if I'm going to take a pause here and go back to the Evernote world, Evernote, the web clipper in Evernote is a very, very powerful extension and very powerful tool. It does a lot more, but it does the same basic function. In Evernote, you can actually choose to save the information in a variety of different formats and apply uh, send it to different notebooks and add additional tags. So you've got a little bit extra functionality within Evernote, uh, but it's still the same essential thing as saving the URL, saving something interesting at that particular page and saving it into your notebook. So I think that's a way that you're going to end up using Google Keep a lot. Now let's jump over and I'm going to take you into the Google Keep account in mobile. All right, I have fired Google Keep Up now on my smartphone, in this case an iPhone 8, and looky looky, it's the exact same in both environments. This is the beauty of Google Keep, the fact that all of the data that we store and create and collect on our desktop computers or on our tablets is available on our smartphones and any content we create on our smartphone is available on our other systems. That is how Google Keep ends up being such a useful tool for us, giving us access to all of our stuff wherever we need it, whenever we need it. Now, as useful as it is being able to access your notes within within the smartphone app, which is pretty self-evident, being able to go through all of the information and be able to call up any note, your phone really becomes in my what I call a kind of an information vacuum, collecting information from the world around you and then storing it for, for future use in Google Keep. And the way that you're going to create notes most often in Google Keep is, with your smartphone is either by taking a text note, a voice note, or memo, or taking a photo of whatever it is around. You can also create illustrations and drawing documents, which I don't do too much with. I'm not very good with the drawing, but if I wanna create a note, all I do is I tap on that little note button there at the very bottom, and you can type in a note using the keyboard. Now, they've also got several options 
for inputting notes by voice. Now, built in to Google Keep, you see the little microphone button there in the very bottom? This acts as kind of a quick voice memo. Now, this isn't for taking long dictation. This is for creating a quick little memo. So it just records a very short snippet of information, but it does it in a kind of unique way. So let me show you how that works. If you have to do a quick note, which is, remember to pick up some milk on the way home today and some cheese. So there, first of all, very cool. It parsed out the information for us. So it, so it converted voice to text. That's cool, but it also embeds an audio playback. Remember to pick so up hear some it. milk on the way home today and Turn some cheese. Volume here. It's been synced and it syncs almost instantly. Did you see how fast that happened? We haven't sped things up here at all in editing. That is how quickly that all happened. So that is a memo style note. But if you wanted to create a longer note where you actually wanted to make notes, then you can use the built-in dictation that's built into either operating system, Android or Apple. In this case, we'll use Apple's own built-in Siri-based voice dictation, and I can now create a far longer and more complex note comma. With punctuation, I can dictate text that would be used in an email or for a longer form memo or a letter or almost any other purpose, period. This dictation feature is something that I know I use a lot when I'm using either Evernote or Google Keep, period. That's it. I created that note. Watch how quickly it syncs across. Boom, there it is. So the dictation feature is also a way that you'll create notes a lot. Now, especially in Evernote, I use the camera a lot for creating uh, additional information. If I'm in a meeting, I'll take a picture of the whiteboard or take a picture of a notebook or a napkin that we write down information on. Uh, I use the camera an awful lot. Now the camera built into Google Keep is a very, very basic camera. It's just basically a camera. It takes a photo and it stores the photo in Google Keep. That's it. This is one area that Google Keep really comes up second to Evernote because the camera that's built into Evernote will take a look at a business card, decide that it's a business card, parse out all the text and the phone number and the email information and put it into your contacts. It does those sorts of things. It looks at a document and turns it into a PDF. It does all of those sorts of things, it does the Evernote camera. The Google camera that's built into this doesn't have that functionality. If you're looking for that functionality, you can use a third party tool. You could use something like Scannable in order to, in order to do it. But built into Google Keep is not the same deep functionality of camera that's built into Evernote. That's one, as far as I'm concerned, one of the biggest differences between the two. Now, before we wrap things up, a couple of favors to ask. First of all, if you found this video to be valuable, please give us a like and share this document if you can. As well, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Dotto Tech YouTube channel, please do so now and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you hear about all of our new videos when we upload them. Now, as promised, let's kind of go through a list and compare Evernote and Google Keep. And to a certain extent, this also includes OneNote because most of what I say about Evernote includes OneNote, except for the fact that OneNote's free, whereas Evernote you pay for. First of all, Google Keep is 100% free, whereas Evernote for the premium services, you do end up paying for that. Uh, Google Keep doesn't take up any drive space on your, it doesn't count against your, against your Google storage. Uh, so you can have an unlimited number of notes and you never have to worry about storage. You are limited in storage in Evernote. Uh, there are, however, no notebooks, no way to create uh, that defined structure within Google Keep. You have to use labels or search for demarking your information. Uh, Evernote can work quite well as a writing tool. You've got full formatting, full text formatting of documents and, and, and quite a few layout tools. Whereas Google Keep has only the most basic formatting, basically turning things from a list into a text document. That's pretty much about it as far as formatting goes. So it's not the best tool for doing proper writing type work. Uh, there is no standalone app in, uh, actually I should correct that. There is a standalone app for Google Keep in your smartphone, but there's no desktop standalone app as there is for Evernote. Now, as far as publishing and sharing, 
Google Keep does a good job of sharing documents, of sharing notes with collaborators that you want to share notes with, but it does not allow you to publish your documents the way that you can publish documents within Evernote. As a matter of fact, we just recently did a, what I think is a great video on how to use Evernote as a publishing platform. Uh, Google Keep doesn't have any of those capabilities. You're limited to 20,000 characters per note within Google Keep. Uh, the Web Clipper is, of course, far more limited. The camera nowhere near as sophisticated as it is is in the uh, is it is in Evernote. There's no automatic data recognition and that sort of stuff in the camera. Uh, but so with, you know, when we look at that list, you might think that overall Google Keep is quite an inferior tool to Evernote. But it's not. As a matter of fact, having gone through this process of preparing this demo, uh, Google Keep is a keeper for me. See what I did there? I'm going to keep it on my system. I'm using it in a slightly different way than I'm using Evernote. Evernote is for more permanent work that I'm that's ongoing and project-based work. Like if I'm developing an online course or if I'm working on changes to the website and we have these kind of permanent documents that they're working with. But for quick and easy work, for quick little to-do lists, for quick little projects, for quick notes, I am increasingly using Google Keep and it's living really nicely in my own personal productivity system with Evernote. It's going to be it's going to be a tool that I'm going to continue to use. It's you know it's part of the Google ecosystem. It works really well and it integrates nicely with the other tools. And as far as I'm concerned, it's going to stay on my system. I I will not say that one is better than the other. They're like my children. I love them all equally and I recognize each one has different strengths and weaknesses. Well, I hope you found this video to Today to be useful and I would love to hear what you have to say about Google Keep versus Evernote versus OneNote. What do you use? What do you like? What don't you like? Please post in the comments below and I promise you I read each and every comment even though I don't necessarily have time to reply to every comment. Till next time I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. <laughs>